Okay, welcome to uh, Urban Permaculture, Day in the Life of. And uh, the reason I made this video is because around 15 years ago, a friend of mine asked me a question and he said, uh, he said, so what do permaculture practitioners do on a daily basis? And I thought this was quite a good question, so I decided to make a video. And most of the things that I do vary from day to day, but there's always something to do. So uh, come and join me on this little adventure. Right, so first job of the day today has been uh, taking cuttings from three or four blackcurrant plants. And there's about, I don't know, about between 18 and 20 there, I haven't bothered counting. And uh, with these fruit bushes being perennial, this is all about succession, which is central to, uh, to permaculture in creating resilience. So basically, all these cuttings have been taken off four or five plants and uh, they've started budding already and this will give us fruit for year, many years to come and if you look after your black currant bush it should give you fruit for between 10 and 15 years so and again another free resource and a very useful resource at that right so today we're going to crop some uh, ochre tubers which are a South American crop, a little bit like potato, but they're, uh, they're not the same family as potato at all. And uh, the leaves on top of the plant are edible. They taste a little bit lemony. And then the tubers that we're after are all over the show. So I put these out around May and then we're now in 7th 8th of november so it doesn't look like there's a great deal but we'll see And uh, here's the ochre tubers that have cleaned up. And basically, this lot, I'm going to save them, I'm going to uh, wrap them in tissue, put them in a bowl, uh, and leave them in the fridge till March of next year. Quite an important crop, ochre tuber, although they're not a potato. They're, uh, they're quite similar in some ways, but uh, the important thing is that they don't suffer with blight. And blight's a big problem in the UK at the moment, so these are possibly a carbohydrate crop of the future. Who knows? Right, so I'm just going to crop some uh, some rosemary at the moment for over the festive period and uh, some of it will be used today in cooking and some of it will be dried out for uh, various medicinal preparations, drinks and to use in cooking. Right, so now we're going to get a few bay leaves as well. Great addition to uh, any casserole or stew. And... This bush is about four years old and there's absolutely tons and uh, it's certainly worth reading up. I've read recently on uh, some of the medicinal qualities of, of bay leaves, particularly uh, drinking bay leaf tea. So have a read up, it's quite interesting. There's lots of uh, medicinal compounds inside bay. So I'm just going to take one more, you don't need many of them. And then we're going to get some mint next. So we're just going to grab a little bit of mint and uh, this particular variety is uh, Tash Kent Mint. The, uh, the type that you'll find in uh, Moroccan mint tea if anybody's ever been to Morocco and tried it. So uh, we're just going to take a little bit of this for a brew. And uh, incredibly this plant, this is a mother plant, we've actually had about 60 cuttings out of this this year. And uh, there's still plenty of mint to get us over the winter. So uh, just enough for a brew there. Right, well, uh, this is the little micro food forest in the front garden. And uh, it only gets about two or three hours sun a day. All sorts of uh, useful and edible stuff here. But today, we're going to get the remainder of the apples. I don't know if you can see well enough. There's quite a few left. 
and we're going to make apple pies and cider. So, we're going to get them picked now. Okay, so I've just picked a load more apples from the front garden. And uh, I promise not to make another batch of cider, but there's so many that I've decided to. So, the way I do the cider, um, I can't afford to buy an apple press. So, I use the leaching method, which is basically hot water, apples, sugar, and the hot water leaches the juice from the apples. And basically, I'll then pour all that solution into a demijohn with yeast. So, We've got apple cores over here, you can use these for a variety of different things, including if you keep chickens, you can feed chickens with them. Uh, you can make cider apple vinegar, compost them. I'm sure there's loads of other things you can do with them. And uh, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with this. Possibly some uh, apple pies or pasties later on. But there's another big container of apples left on the tree. So uh, let's get on with the cider making. So we've leached all the uh, all the juice from the apples and we've put it in a demijohn, put some yeast nutrient and some yeast in with it and in a couple of months time that'll be cider. Okay so another little job I'm going to do before I go out and pollard the trees is um, I'm going to siphon off this apple cider vinegar. This by the way was really super easy to make. I chopped pieces of apple up, I put them in the jar poured water over, um, covered it with a bit, a bit of a cotton cloth and then left it for about two weeks, it started fermenting and then it went over to vinegar using whatever magic alchemy is involved in the process. Um, so I'm just going to siphon it off and put it in this bottle and it's cost me absolutely nothing to make and it's made from the spare apples from the tree in the front garden. Okay so siphoned off uh, the apple cider vinegar and uh, got two bottles so as I say cost absolutely nothing to make and uh, apple cider vinegar has got loads of different medicinal properties and it's also good for cooking okay so I've uh, taken time away from uh, the jobs at home and I've just nipped up to the Diggers Hub in Great Lever which is about three or four minute walk away from where I live and uh, the Diggers Hub is run by Bolton Diggers and it's all about providing uh, access to cleanly grown food for people on low incomes so the site's shared with it. there's a project up the top there that's a community project and then this overgrown bit, the, uh, the diggers have let me use this as a permaculture project but due to various things that have been going on this year not really be able to make a great start on it so we're going to work on this over winter and I come here about once or twice a week and it is part of my weekly and daily routine to come up here like I say it's only a few minutes away and uh, it's a great site this there's a uh, Lots of community interaction, lots of local food grown. And here we are at the, uh, the composting loo's being fitted at the moment. And, uh, we've got these two happy diggers here working away. So uh, if one of you could just tell us something about the, um, the ethos and what, what the diggers are actually doing here work-wise and tell us a little bit about yourself, Al. And from Bolton Diggers. Yeah. Uh, what we're trying to do, we're trying to address a situation in which working class communities have become far too dependent on large corporations for giving us the basic needs of our life. So, for example, over the past year or so, you've seen uh, COVID-19 uh, and Brexit, the process of exiting the European Union, have exposed all these fault lines. and. So what we need to do is working class people need to come together in, in the communities and uh, develop uh, strategies for dealing with this to make our communities more autonomous, more independent. On, a, on the level of food, that's, that's what we're doing here on this community garden. 
We're encouraging people to grow much more of their own food so we become dependent, less dependent on these large corporations. Uh, the supermarkets now are the most powerful organisations in this country. We're trying to challenge that and make people less dependent because now uh, we're, going, we're faced with a situation uh, which was exposed under COVID where people were uh, in a very short period of time were, were uh, becoming short of basic foodstuffs and you're going to see this very soon again with, uh, with the Brexit situation which has been, become completely mismanaged by the government and people are going to be realise that they only have themselves to rely on to, uh, to come together and, and develop these independent food sources within their communities so they become independent again as they once were in the past and that's absolutely brilliant and uh, of course this resonates uh, a lot of resilience here and developing resilience in working class communities which is a strong uh, ethos in permaculture anything to say in passing Kath? Um, uh, I think we've got to show people that it is cheap it is to grow your own food and stuff like that and to show that sign of it to show that appeal and a big thing that is getting lost all the time is people working together as well like uh, social spaces I think that's a big uh, problem and it's like libraries shutting and places where people like would meet up and like find out how, how people are with the neighbours and stuff and you know like unions are going down and stuff so just that kind of thing brilliant the benefits of growing and working together and organizing together well thanks a lot for that Kath and uh, thanks a lot Al and uh, we'll see you soon and this is the final job of the day well hardly a job but it's checking out how the wines are doing and uh, every single demijohn of wine that you can see here, there's also some cherry cider that is made aside from the sugar with ingredients from the front and back garden. So just a little bit about what we've got here. We've got two or three gallons of mint wine. We've got cherry cider and the cherry bit is the must that was left over from making cherry wine. And I think there's a demijohn of uh, dandelion wine at the back. Uh, two or three demijohns of apple wine and two demijohns of cherry wine and uh, home brewing is something that's really really worth getting into because quite a lot of people drink and it's a valuable bartering tool sometimes um, I've swapped wine for org organically grown vegetables when I've not been able to provide enough for myself I've sold the odd few bottles of it. I've traded it for traded and swapped it for all sorts over the last ten and fifteen years, and um, and we're talking hundreds and hundreds of bottles. So really easy to make. Uh, the cost roughly for each demijohn for each gallon is about one pound thirty, maybe a little more sometimes depending on what sort of yeast you use. So uh, in times of scarcity, it's a valuable commodity. And in a way, I'd say that it makes our household a little bit more resilient in some ways. Right, well, that's me just about finished for the day. And a big thank you to everybody who's watched this video. And for anybody who's interested in permaculture and who'd like to learn more, it's definitely worth checking out the Permaculture Association's website. Lots of resources, information about courses, information about permaculture, run by a dedicated and intelligent group of people. Uh, I'll leave the link below in the description box. So thanks again for watching. And uh, in an uncertain future, we all need to be as resilient as we possibly can, which I'm sure many of you know. And uh, resilience is the ability to bounce back.